OK, well, the, the good news is that we're indoors, so we don't have to worry about the wind and the rain outside. Yeah. Uh, but basically, the sound coverage in here would split down into about three or four particular components. Uh, there would be effects mics. There would be effects mics for the dartboard, and we would contrive to get the sound of the dart hitting the board. And for that, we would probably use an ECM-50, which is a little personal mic, secreted behind the board. And that would be really nice to get the thump of the dart as it hits the, uh, hits the dart board. In addition to that, still on effects, we would have a general effects mic, which would pick up the audience, the applause, the reaction. And I would use that generally to create a darts-type atmosphere in the room. And then another component would be the commentary box, very important, where the commentator would sit with, and he would have communications requirements as well as just speaking into a lip microphone. And he would have a pair of headphones and the ability to talk back without it going out on the air. Another microphone talking back to the scanner, which is colloquially called a lazy talkback mic because it's just you casually pick it up and speak into it. In addition to that, we may have interviews, and so we would want a stick mic. We'll have a stick mic over in a certain area. Mm -hmm. It's around here. Yeah. It's, 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 it's around here. We have a, have a stick, a stick mic. mic. And that, on this occasion, for, for this particular event, would also be used for the scorer. So that, that would be the basic sound setup. In addition to that, we would have communications so that people could hear what's going on in the scanner, they were able to hear talk back. And in, most importantly, the stage manager, who is the, the director's ears and eyes and voice on the floor, would be able to hear the director and be able to speak back to him. At the beginning of the day, I would almost certainly come into the room, just check it over, decide, make a decision on where I'm going to put the microphones. I would tell my guys what to do, how to proceed with the rig, and then the, the nuts and bolts of it I would leave down to them and I would go back out to the scanner and start plugging up the cables at that end. And probably the first thing we would do was to set up some sort of communication mm -hmm. between my boys and the scanner so that I could talk to them as the rig progresses. Because we're using a, a, a variety of different cameras, some, some have talkback built in, it comes up the camera cable to them, but others don't have that, they just have a, a triax which just sends the video back to the scanner so they don't have any inbuilt talkback communications. So we've had to provide headphones for the cameras as well. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to speak back, but as the stage manager was around, he, she was the, the voice for the cameraman talking back to the scanner. My particular job was to put a microphone on the dart board so that we could hear the thwack of the dart actually uh, entering the, uh, the dart board. And the way that we decided to do that was to put a microphone at the back of the dart board. We would have liked to have used an ECM-50, which would have been appropriate for this particular time. period of time in the 1970s. Um, but in fact, we hadn't got one. We would got um, an ECM-77, which is a little bit later on. But it's the same type of microphone. It's smaller. Um, if I show you what we actually did and very carefully rotate it so that the microphone is, is actually here. Here's the, here's the wire, which eventually goes the back top. to the scanner. So what I'm going to do now is to take the tape off that I put on originally. And so we can have a look what was under there. <laughs> right, OK. You take the dartboard <laughs> and I'll take the mic. Yeah. Oops, that's it. OK. <laughs> OK, so that's the ECM-77. And it's surrounded it's by way. this... <laughs> material. <laughs> That's we can never get, get it off. Can <laughs> and um, originally designed to work as a personal mic. Yes, uh, it was. Yeah, yes, so. and. Um, so that's it. Little yeah, little so tiny microphone. It's actually it's omnidirectional. And uh, it's called it it's it's. Its name is an, e an ECM 77, made it, by Sony. What does ECM mean? Uh, electro electrostat electret, it's isn't it? Electret. Electret. Um, we'll have to ask Doug about this because he's the supervisor. <laughs> he's, he's and he would. Do they use those microphones more than OB? They would normally be used yeah. as personal mics. So you would have a clip and the microphone would go here. Um, you can use them for all sorts mm. of situations where you like this one, where you. 
you need something which is relatively because, small and... Uh, because they're omnidirectional, you often, if you're watching news now, you often see them, they seem to be pointing the wrong way, but as they're omnidirectional, it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> so I often used to think, what? Well, yeah. <laughs> there are people, of course, who, yeah. they, they, there are people who put them upside down yeah. like that, and then there are people like me who yeah. always insist yeah, upon yeah, them being they, that they way They just look better. Like, yeah. um, but there's, there's also a windshield which That's goes true. over yeah, these. They fall off if you uh, do Yes, <laughs> yes, but you can, um, uh, the, the reason for having the windshield mm. on, even though we're... Yeah. Inside, yeah, which pops, is quite interesting, pops, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, so it stops that sort of problem. Right. Okay. So this is this is a gun microphone. It's nothing, I thought it was an eight one six. It's not an eight one six. It's a four one six and an eight one six windshield. Oh, actually, cheated, that's, that's, that's the cheated. first surprise for us. <laughs> it does the same job. So it's <laughs> yeah. um, basically, it's um, uh, a long tube with, with um, a, a, an omni mic at the, at the back but it means that it's very directional and um, so we've used it here for coverage of the audience. The 416 is, is quite a legendary microphone mm. it was the industry standard for pick up uh, from a distance it's, it's highly reliable it's got an enormous dynamic range you, mm. you can shout into it at close quarters and yet it can pick up a whisper from across mm. a room or even further. All right, yeah. Okay, well. Um, right, well, look, I shall come and sit in the, the seat where the commentator uh, sat. And, um, okay. Um, I think that one of the most important things about a commentary box is its, its position. The commentator must be able to see the action, and in this particular case, it's the dartboard. Yeah. And we've arranged this in, in such a way that he's got a nice clear view of the dartboard. He would normally have a monitor which currently is sitting on the floor there at the moment and normally it would sit here in front of him so that he would be able to see the um, result of the director selecting the appropriate camera. Um, but he needs to be in the action he needs mm. to be um, there amongst the the crowd he yeah. needs to feel the action the it's buzz, very yeah, important really, yeah. for him yeah. um, and uh, for me when when i go to set up a commentary position that that is the first thing i look at i look what what is it that, that the commentator himself um want, wants to see where does he want to be in terms of the um facilities that we've got here the one of the most important things is a communication facility so that initially the sound assistant here can talk to the scanner and Doug the sound supervisor uh, and later on the commentator can listen to the director and also communicate with people in the scanner. Okay, as sound supervisor, I'd now go back to the scanner and wait to hear from my guys as they're rigging the barren box. The first thing I would do would be to get establish communication with them. Without that, we can't really rig anything and be sure that it's going to work. So I would go back to the scanner, start plugging up everything in the scanner, uh, put, uh, configure the sound desk in the way I would want it to set up the channels, and wait to hear from my guys when they've started rigging. So I'll go off now. The most important thing in any outside broadcast is to establish communications between the site and the vehicle outside. And to do that, we use the Baron box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, Doug is out in the scanner, and I'm going to attract his attention by pressing the Q sound mixer light. And I shall also listen on production talkback and I shall speak to Doug on the lazy mic. Hello, Doug, how are you? Hello, Ken, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm hearing you loud and clear on the lazy mic. I Excellent. You're hearing production talkback. I am indeed hearing production talkback. Um, would you like to listen to uh, the lip mic, which is here with me in the commentary box? Going yep. to the lip mic. Okay, let's This up. is the lip mic, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. And I'll just um, explain a little bit about the lip mic. It's essentially a very insensitive microphone. It's a, a, a lip ribbon. Is that not correct, Doug? Yeah, actually it's, it's known as a noise cancelling microphone so that it's very insensitive to uh, vo sounds that are further away than a few inches. So provided you speak close, 
the lip mic will only hear your voice and it won't hear anything else. So in fact, if I speak out here, it's not a lot of use to you, is it, Doug? But no, if I bring the will... microphone closer, you're going to say, yes, that's, 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 that's all right, isn't it? One, two, three, lovely. four, five, six, seven. Thank you. So, that's fine and, on the lip mic. And, and the reason, of course, for doing this is that what we want to exclude is the sound, the horrendous noise of the crowd all around me. That might, that might be the case at a, a football ground. Yes, it's always Sorry, useful to you. separate the commentator from the... Uh, um, gosh, these, um, these particular lit mics probably... I don't know, go back to... What does 40, Dave think? 1930s, 40s, 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 yes. I mean, this one's not quite pretty, pretty old, old quite isn't old. it? <laughs> yes, it's, um, they, they are still used today. They, they are used in um, football uh, matches. Um, the BBC in particular likes to use lip microphones because you get this clean sound. Clean sound is something which is does not have uh, other sounds um, uh, uh, with it so that you can you can use that as a source. So that's the object of that. We would have to give the cameramen or make sure that the cameramen received production talk back, in other words the director speaking uh, and also the PA. Um, we would also check that the um, the cameramen could talk to the the racks operator, the the vision supervisor. So, um, oh, Doug, maybe. it's true that we would also have to um, provide and make sure that all the communications sure. facilities were working. You can't do an outside broadcast unless you have the very basic communications in place, not only simply between here and the scanner, but between the cameraman and the scanner, and not only that, the outgoing communication circuit. So uh, the, the sound department was responsible for um, quite a lot of things that, that are not apparent in the programme chain. But also, uh, overproduction talk, like each department has its own override switch, so from the, the vision end, they have vision talk, back and, and when they press, if they're talking to their lads out in, on the field, or the, the uh, lighting um, with, uh, spot, spot operators, what I'm trying to say, and they can do that, and it won't, it won't go to anybody else, it'll only go to them. Uh, whereas Doug in this scanner, if he just wants to talk to us and nobody else, he just presses sound talk back. Yes, well, the lip mic, I've got a 24 channel. Two. This sound desk has 24 channels and uh, three groups. Uh, the first 12 channels go to group one, and then the groups two and three are split between the other 12 channels. So in total, we've only got 24 channels, which by modern standards is rather limited. Nevertheless, in those days, in 1970s, it was a great leap forward compared with what we had before and it was one of the first desks to have built-in equalization on each channel. So if you had some wind noise or a voice didn't sound quite right, you could adjust the... you could adjust... you could introduce equalization to correct that. The, uh, the output of the sound desk would go to line sending amplifiers and then would be sent down probably post office lines if it was going to a live to back to the studio there is also a tape recorder for playing in uh, opening and closing music and then there is the communications which is for me is on a, a few buttons in the middle of the sound desk and then the the actual connections with the outside world were made on a jack field which is on my right hand side and also this sound desk was in mono. We did not have stereo sound in 1970.